NVIDIA's RTX 4000 series was supposed to be the future of gaming graphics, but in reality, it's been one of the most controversial GPU lineups in years. Some cards shocked everyone with performance, others flopped right out of the gate. But in 2025, with new prices, driver updates, and power concerns, where do they really stand? Today, I'm ranking every major RTX 4000 GPU from worst to best, based on real-world value, performance, VRAM, and longevity. Before we jump in, here's how the ranking works. Let's start at the bottom, the D tier. These are the GPUs I'd avoid in 2025, even with discounts. RTX 4080, non-super. The original RTX 4080 launched at $1,200, and honestly, it never recovered from that. On paper, it was powerful, but when the 4090 existed for just a few hundred more, and the 4070 Ti Super showed up later with nearly the same gaming performance for way less, the 4080 just stopped making sense. Even now, unless it's heavily discounted, the value just isn't there. It aged fast, and not in a good way. RTX 4060 Ti8 GB NVIDIA's decision to give the 4060 Ti just 8GB of VRAM on a 128-bit bus was the start of its problems. Sure, it sips power and runs cool, but in modern AAA titles, especially at 1440p, it already shows signs of bottlenecking. And future games won't be any kinder. At its price point, it just doesn't compete with cards like the RX 6700 XT or even older 3060 Ti deals. Unless it drops well below MSRP, skip it. Moving up to C tier, these cards aren't total failures, but they're stuck in an awkward spot. For most gamers, they're just not worth buying in 2025. RTX 4060 Non-Ti the RTX 4060 is efficient and affordable, but its performance gain over the RTX 3060 is minor, and the 8GB VRAM limit already feels restrictive in heavier games. It's okay for 1080p esports titles, but for future-proofing or AAA gaming, there are simply better options at similar prices. RTX 4060 Ti 16GB The 16th GB version of the 4060 Ti should have been a redemption story, but it wasn't. Yes, it fixes the VRAM issue from the 8GB model, but it launched at $500 for performance that still can't touch a 6700 XT or even a discounted 3070. VRAM isn't everything. Bandwidth still bottlenecks this card hard. If it drops under $400 maybe, but right now, C tier all the way. Now into B tier, these are the cards that aren't bad. In fact, they can be great if the price is right or you're building around specific needs. RTX 4070, non-super. The base RTX 4070 is a capable 1440p card with good efficiency and 12 GB of VRAM. It's quiet, runs cool, and supports all the latest features like DLSS 3 and frame generation. The issue? The 4070 Super exists, and often for just $50 more it delivers noticeably better performance. So, the regular 4070 isn't a bad card, but unless you find it on sale, it's stuck in this weird middle ground. RTX 4080 Super Now this one might surprise some people. The 4080 Super is a great GPU, but it's still expensive. Performance-wise, it's right behind the 4090, and way better value than the original 4080. But at $999, it's still overkill for most gamers, especially when the 4070 Ti Super exists for way less. If you're doing 4K or heavier workstation loads, the 4080 Super is worth considering. But for pure gaming, there's better value just below it. Now we're into A tier. These are the cards that deliver where it counts. Great performance, solid value, and future-proof enough for most gamers. RTX 4070 Super This is the card the original 4070 should have been. The 4070 Super brings noticeably better performance, especially at 1440p, while keeping the same 12 GB of VRAM, low power draw, and modern features. It often trades blows with older high-end cards like the 3090 while using way less power and costing way less too. If you're gaming at 1440p or even light 4K and want modern features like DLSS3 and frame gen, this is a seriously strong pick. RTX 4090 Yes, it's the most powerful consumer GPU available on, by far. But at $1,600 and up, it's not a great value unless you're doing more than gaming. 
For 4K 120 Hz gaming, heavy 3D work, or long-term performance headroom, uh, the 4090 is unmatched. But for the average gamer, it's extreme overkill, which is why I'm keeping it in A instead of S. Still, it's close to making S tier, and you'll see why when we get there. And finally, S tier. These are the cards that hit the sweet spot. If you're buying in 2025, these are the ones I'd actually recommend first. RTX 4070 Ti Super. This card is arguably the best balanced GPU in NVIDIA's entire 4000 lineup. It delivers near 4080 levels of performance, but with lower power draw, a better price, and excellent 1440p and even 4K gaming potential. You get 16 GB of VRAM, full support for DLSS 3 and frame gen, and high efficiency all around. Whether you're upgrading from a 10 or 20 series card or building new, this card just makes sense. So that's the full breakdown, from the overpriced flops to the absolute champions of the RTX 4000 lineup. Let me know in the comments, which card would you pick in 2025, or are you skipping the 4000 series entirely?